West Hill United is a progressive spiritual community where how you live is more important than what you believe. West Hill United is a people, a place, an idea. We are a community living out of a progressive faith, striving to make a positive difference in our own lives, the lives of others, and the world. Join us Sundays at 10.30 a.m. or connect with us at any time. There is a conspiracy of goodness happening right now. An enormous wave of progress is well underway in the world and almost no one knows about it. Now, not many people know that during World War II, the little village of Le Champon, France, managed to save 3,500 Jews from the Nazi concentration camps. At great risk to their own lives, and with no formal organization, they saved thousands, most of them orphans, for several years. Now in 1987, a rabbi, Harold Schulweis, was giving a talk in Europe about this chapter in history. And he said at the end of the talk, an old man stood up in the back of the room to say he'd been one of the Dutch rescuers. I used it really to support my daughter's degree back home, sending money right to her mobile wallet. And, now and the old man asked, why do we always focus on the conspiracy of evil that was World War II? Do you think I could have saved an entire family in my home without the active participation of the milkman, the mailman, and the neighbors? No, the old man said. For every one person saved, there were seven who were rescuers. It was, he said, a conspiracy of goodness. Now, this is who we are. We are not what we see on the internet and social media right now. We are doers. We are rescuers. We are helpers. We have been for hundreds of thousands of years. The advent of the internet does not change that. While there are countless people who are very famous for doing acts of incredible heroism and goodness, by far the majority of people who are making a, the world a better place, well, they're genuine conspirators for goodness, like the milkman, the mailman, and the neighbors in Le Chambon, France. Their stories are just not rising to the top of the internet for now. Take, for example, Topher White. He's an ordinary engineer who has discovered that we can save the rainforest using old cell phones like we all have in a junk drawer. His organization, the Rainforest Connection, takes the old cell phones, tunes them to pick up only the sound of a chainsaw, and then places them at intervals around the forest. And the minute illegal loggers fire up the chainsaws, the phones send a signal up to the satellite and down to local rangers who can swoop in and save the day and save the rainforest for the local communities who depend on them for their livelihood. Another great example is an organization called Skatistan. So that story starts with a wonderful Australian researcher named Oliver Perkovich, who wound up in 2007 in Kabul, Afghanistan. And he looked around himself and realized that 75% of the population were under the age of 25, and no one was investing in this group after decades of war. So he looked at the problem carefully and the resources at his disposal and decided there was something that he held dear that might hold an answer. Skateboards. Oliver realized that no one had banned skateboarding yet. So he swooped under the radar screen and started an enormous community, all focused on educating girls and street children who might never have a shot at a nice future. Skatistan grew so fast that in 10 years, they had similar programs up and running in Cambodia and Africa. And have you heard of a wonderful thought leader named Daniel Kish? Maybe you have. Some people refer to him as the original Batman. You know, Daniel got that moniker because he lost both his eyes as a baby and taught himself to see with sound. Part of the brain that was gonna be devoted to sight 
repurposed itself. And now he uses a kind of natural sonar, like bats and dolphins, to create mental images of the world around him. Daniel's organization, Visioneers.org, has taught this technique to thousands of people in 40 countries. Daniel can ride a bike. Now, I tell you, his story just kicks down the door on what we might all think is impossible. What Daniel's doing is backed up by lots of research on other capabilities that our brains might have. Right between our own ears, who knows what we're capable of? I mean, these kind of things, stories go on and on. Um, scientists have discovered that trees are talking to each other. And doctors are using virtual reality instead of anesthesia. Have you heard of Damien Mander? He's a former counterinsurgency expert in the Iraq War who has discovered that single mothers make the best game wardens in Africa for a whole host of reasons. And they are changing conservation in ways that will be portable all around the world, saving endangered species. It makes my heart sore to know these stories. Why aren't we hearing this in the news and on the internet? I don't think it's a lack of goodness in the world. I think it's a lack of awareness. Because the earliest kinds of selflessness and good intention is always quiet. And for now, those stories are just not making it to the top of the internet. So if you feel like it's all too crazy, too much to tackle, like we can never rein the internet in, I'd like to offer you a different perspective. Experience tells me that the internet is only a slice of reality. A more complete picture of our world and each other would include countless ordinary people making the world a better place in all kinds of ways, large and small. And for now, their stories just aren't rising to the top because the internet has become an attention economy. Nothing else matters there. In fact, the last 20 years, the internet has been designed to completely capture and hold our attention. And to do that, they've designed, especially social media, to trigger some of our most primitive and irresistible emotions, like fear, anger, and scarcity. What we have now is an internet functioning like a toddler running with scissors. And the first thing we have to do is stop running with it. What if, instead of allowing the internet to unconsciously divide and confuse us, what if we conspired to bring goodness and progress to the surface on the internet? What if we chose to elevate what's best in each other and the world? We can do that. There are four simple shifts that we can use the internet as normal, but practice and fundamentally change what rises to the top of the internet. Now, the first shift is really easy. Pause. Pause before you click on anything, because someone is counting every click you make. And what we click on, we get more of. Your click is a vote for anything you engage with. And by click, I mean a tap, a like, a share, a comment. Anything that we engage gets brought to us and served to us next even if it's leaving us confused, heartbroken, or fearful. And that brings me to shift number two, ignore more. We can ignore the chaos building and all that negativity right into obscurity. No one is creating content if we don't engage with it. I'm guessing that if you pause for just a millisecond before you click on anything and ask yourself one simple quick question, do we need more of this? I'm guessing about 80% of what you used to click on out of fear, anger, or boredom, you will ignore. And that brings you to shift number three. Imagine a natural wonder working to tackle the climate crisis. Wetlands, they help absorb greenhouse gases and preserve our environment. Discover more nature-based solutions and see nature as something new. Lucichart makes intelligent diagramming easy and helps your best ideas become real. Seek signs of goodness and progress. For now, the internet will not bring it to you. It's not built that way. 
But if you do the first two shifts, pause and ignore more, eventually signs of goodness and progress will start popping up everywhere for you. And that brings me to the fourth shift. Share signs of goodness and progress. Content creators are paying very close attention to what we share. And the internet is now built to amplify that. We can use that to open a new era. We have all the power to bend the internet in the direction of positivity. Over and over again, the opening of a new era happens when a new way of thinking takes hold and starts gaining conspirators. And a new way of doing things starts building momentum of goodwill that becomes unstoppable. A conspiracy of goodness is a pattern throughout history just before the next major leap in progress. Think about it for a minute. We humans have a habit of adopting some really primitive practices that eventually collapse of their own weight. Think about things like gladiators fighting to the death in the Colosseum, slavery, child labor, not allowing women the right to vote. All those practices made perfect sense to many until one day they didn't. And this is the way social change happens, quietly at first, when one by one we take matters into our own hands, turn it against things that seem like madness and offend us at our core. I think we're at just one of those tipping points right now with the craziness in our online lives. We have got to stop the noise, the negativity and the division. And we can get there. We can rethink the role of the internet and make one of those leaps in progress. We can conspire against the chaos builders and the noise. And we can quietly take matters into our own hands and make the world a better place. Remember that for every one person saved in Le Chambon, there were seven who were rescuers. We don't have to go out and personally save the rainforest. We can be like the milkman, the mailman, and the neighbors and create all kinds of goodness. We can start and propagate waves of progress. It is still an amazing world. When that slice of reality rises to the top of the internet, a new era will open for us all. And all we have to do is pause, ignore more, seek signs of goodness and progress, and share it. Welcome to the Conspiracy of Goodness. Join the Conspiracy of Goodness with the readings now instead of before um and i've just collected really pithy statements by people you the names of who you will know that have that have urged us to share the goodness and so i'm going to ask florence um to be on board as we share the first three the first is by a south african anglican bishop known for his work as an anti-apartheid and human rights activist in the words of Desmond Tutu, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. And an English actor, poet, and writer of more than 30 major plays, 154 sonnets, whose works have been translated into every living language. In the words of William Shakespeare from his play, The Merchant of Venice, how far that little candle throws its beams, so shines a good deed in a weary world. And a writer and creator of numerous moral fables whose origins are unclear, even his existence is unclear, but the first record of him writing was in six 20 BCE. 
In the words of Aesop, from his fable, The Lion and the Mouse, no act of kindness, however small, is ever wasted. Offered to... as... Oh, I'm sorry, Florence, my apologies. Offered as wisdom for the journey. May we walk, May we walk in, in its light. I invited Florence earlier to add that right there, and then I interrupted her, so I'm sorry. I wanted to add a little piece right here, and it's, you may sound a little odd to put it in with this, this direction the topic's going, but I, 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 think, I think it's really important. And the, I, I remember a, a statement by the poet W.H. Auden who said, we are all here on earth to help others. What on earth the others are there for, I do not know. And the idea being with that, that, and I've often heard it, we've often heard it, but we are here to help others. We are here to do goodness. Take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. And, and there's got a, a lot of wisdom in that. But I just wanted to throw in, and, and some of us need reminding much more than others on this, that the sole reason for you to take care of yourself is not so that you can take care of others. It's a very good thing, and it's a very true thing. But there's also, and we try to stress this at, at, at West Hill, that the acts of respect and kindness and comfort and encouragement is also how we treat ourselves. There's, there's, there's an inherent reason for you to take care of yourself, and it's because of the worth of you. As Auden says, what are these others there for? If, are they there for only for you or why? So the, the, sometimes that gets mixed up, and it's just as worthy. And so I'm, I'm going to insert that into the quote Florence just gave, to, to add yourself to that quote, to say that no act of kindness to others or yourself is ever wasted. And it's a matter of balance. So I'm just throwing that in with this idea of, of kindness to others. And back to, to the internet, I, I was looking up that idea of how we, and maybe if some of you don't use social media at all or internet, but you're related to someone who does or you live next to someone who does. So it does matter incredibly much. And this author was saying that when we, when we spend time exploring the world, we're doing one of two things. We're doing uh, uh, consuming it or we're creating it. And it's a balance to do because sometimes you're ordering things you need and order, make, you're making donations online and those are good things you're using it. But also to create, as what the speaker said, every time we select something, we're adding a vote to it. And so we're, we're consuming, but we're also creating as we spend time on the internet. And I just found a couple of ways that might make sense to us to do some hints about how to make it more positive on the internet. And these are things we can all do even to send an encouraging message to a friend. Have you ever thought, thought my mom always used to say, my mother always used to say, everyone has very thoughtful th thoughts in their head, but the ones that will go ahead and then act on it, it's that impetus to say, I will send that note of thank you to someone. I will send that note of encouragement. I noticed what you did on Sunday was very you know, meaningful to me and I send the message. Uh, passing on useful information. I just discovered how to make our own cleanser in our kitchen. I'm going to pass it on to other people. Uh, encouraging messages or pictures. I saw this beautiful picture in my backyard. I took a beautiful picture and I want to send it to you. An article that's insightful. It could even be something you disagree with, but let's talk about it. And then, and also passing along in a, in a respectful way the needs of, of, of others that, that might need some help. And so the, the words... The word is, is how to use it as a consumer, but also as a creator of good. And so back to Florence, um, a quote from an Indian lawyer, political ethicist, who led the campaign for India's independence from British rule and inspired movements all over the world for civil rights and freedom. In the words of Mahatma Gandhi, when I despair, I remember that all through history, the way of truth and love have always won. There have been tyrants and murderers, and for a time, they can seem invincible. But in the end, they always fall. Think of it. Always. Uh, uh. 
person who had every right to comment on this situation. Um, and whether the bad guys or the tyrants or the oppressors or the discriminators appear to be winning, and they, they make many wins and they hurt many people, uh, but they too come to an end and all the efforts against their work um, can contribute to that. Some of you have heard of or read of the works of Robert Ingersoll. He's one of my heroes. He's an American lawyer. He was an American lawyer. I mean, he was always an American lawyer, but he's not with us anymore. He was born in 1833, so he couldn't, no matter how many great, great, great grandchildren he has. An American lawyer, writer, and orator, a speech maker, he was a speech maker, in an era with no microphones, and so he had packed thousands into the halls of, of American cities and spoke with a voice that commanded respect and, and, and engagement. Um, and he, he lived what's called during the golden age of free thought. People were just breaking away to say, I'd like to think this through for myself and come up with my own conclusions. He lectured on civil rights, on religion, on Shakespeare, on Voltaire, on Abraham Lincoln, on Walt Whitman, who was a friend of his who said, it should not be surprising that I'm drawn to Ingersoll he lives, embodies the individuality, the kindness, the warmth that I preach. I see in Bob Ingersoll the noblest specimen, pure out of the soil, spreading, giving, and demanding light. He also angered just about every churchgoer in the land at the time. He spoke out against, against dogma that was thrust upon people with no choice, and he asked people to think. Um, I have his lectures at home. Uh, one is this called The Gods, and another is called Why I Am an Agnostic, and they are fascinating reading. I just ordered, because I lost, my version, my, my edition of Some Mistakes of Moses, and I, I encourage you to, to enjoy re reading that as well. There are a few uh, mistakes of Moses, put very respectfully and well. But the reason, reason I even bring his name to light here is not how good he was at what he did, not how clever he was, very witty, very brave, not, not that. But if you recall in 1925, well, I mean, not personally, but that in 1925, uh, there was a trial that popularly called, was called the Monkey Scopes Trial and that was about evolution taught in schools. It was a, quite a controversy. And the lawyer that was involved with that was named Clarence Darrow, and he was also a friend of Ingersoll. And this is what he said that, 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 that emphasizes the theme of it wasn't how clever or how skilled, it was who he was that mattered, the positiveness of who he was. And this is what Clarence Darrow said. Robert Ingersoll was a great man a wonderful intellect, a great soul of matchless courage, one of the great men of the earth, and, what, and yet we have no right to bow down to his memory simply because he was great. Great orators, great soldiers, great lawyers often use their gifts for a most unholy cause. We need to pay tribute of love and respect to Ingersoll because he used his matchless power for the good of everyone. And that's that idea. What did he do with his skills? He used them for good. And I'm going to ask Florence to give us one more, uh, another voice of goodness. And this one is from the English anthropologist, primatologist. You have to look that one up. Primatologist, conservationist, and animal welfare activist who was named a United Nations Messenger of Peace. In the words of Jane Goodall, it is these undeniable qualities of human love and compassion and self-sacrifice that give me hope for the future. We are indeed often cruel and evil. Nobody can deny this. We gang up on each one another. We torture each other with words as well as deeds. We fight, we kill but we are also capable of the most noble, generous, and heroic behavior. So it's the balance. And, and the, the speaker on the TED Talk was very, uh, was urging us to, to focus on the positive. 
It's important to add that it doesn't mean we don't pay attention to what's wrong and what's hurting and the people that are being affected by these movements because we, we want to be informed and we want to know that we are angry at things we hear about how people are treating people. It's, it's right to be angry. The, the old fashioned phrase was righteous indignation. We just often use it for something that might not be that righteous, but righteous indignation really says this act, this act of oppression or, 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 or discrimination or actual violence is worthy of anger. It's worthy of my angry response, which then should be turned into something productive and good and positive. So it's that balance. Um, and I, 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 I want to urge the balance. And so I was looking at, at, at the internet again, and I found a video, it's just a couple of minutes, and it is a, a balance of what's, what's needing help and, an, and a positive encouragement to bring that help. It is, uh, it was just done on September 15th by a project called Projecting Change. And I'll just read this to you. Projecting Change organization and partners launched the first drone show of its kind with 1,000 drones. I, if you're familiar, the drone is the camera that will fly around up, up in the air and, and take pictures. 1,000 drones lighting up the New York City sky above the United Nations, which is focusing on you know, climate change, building with a series of shows designed to inspire, educate, unify, and activate our local and global collective around the climate crisis. So you see that balance in there, the actual need and also the positive, protecting the Amazon and other important environmental campaigns. And it coincided with the 78th United Nations General Assembly and the focus on climate change. Um, there's a whole list of its supporters of people that had a responsibility to put this together and it included um, the Oceanic Preservation Society, Holtzman Wildlife, Minds Over Matter, uh, the ALEC is all sorts of institutes and the Amazon Watch and uh, an organization called Eat Differently. So I, I invite you to enjoy, and please watch it again at home. You can just plug it in. But this is uh, the message from 1,000 drones over New York City. the dolphin and the, the, the cougar or the leopard or what that was. Um, but you, it, it had the, the message and it also has an encouragement to do something good with it. And I'd just like to close with a, uh, one, of the, one of the figures that it takes up a third of my dissertation. Um, I've chosen him and I think some of our friends from England are more familiar with him even than we are. Uh, a former bishop uh, named Richard Holloway, very distinguished, intelligent, well-read, poetically-minded former bishop who volunteered to leave the ministry over the issues that the church he felt was not dealing with with, in, with respect for difference, with respect for need. And so he's another hero. And he wrote a book called, uh, about us, about all of us, called Between the Monster and the Saint. Between the Monster and the Saint by Richard Holloway, and I just end with this, his words. It is a harsh world, indescribably cruel. 
It is a gentle world, unbelievably beautiful. It is a world that can make us bitter, hateful, rabid destroyers of joy. It is a world that can draw forth tenderness from us. As we lean towards one another over broken gates, as we lean towards one another over broken gates, it is a world of monsters and saints, a mutilated world, but it is the only one we've been given. We should let it shock us, not into hatred or anxiety, but into unconditional love. We should let it shock us, not into hatred or anxiety, but into unconditional love. Become a sustaining champion of West Hill United's work by committing to an automatic monthly donation. Learn more or donate now through Canada Helps.